So in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 reasons to why you should get the Panasonic S5 Mark II. Stay tuned. So the first reason is of course gonna be the autofocus that this camera has. It's the first Panasonic that has phase detect autofocus and from being the first iteration of phase detect on a Panasonic camera, I'm so, so impressed. I really feel that they've nailed the hardware. You can see where the autofocus is getting you and not getting you. And I only think it's up to the algorithm where the engineers of Panasonic could make some improvements and get this autofocus to become better and better and better. And there are some instances where you can see that it could drift away it could be when I'm using maybe my hands in front of the camera and stuff like that but that those are things that firmware could fix because I really feel that the autofocus on the Panasonic S5 Mark II is on par with the Sony autofocus when it comes to speed and uh, accuracy. Reason number two to why I get this camera in 2023 is gonna be the 6K and you know me I'm not a big fan of the megapixel race where we're getting 6K, 8K, 12K cameras however the implementation of the 6K on the Panasonic S5 Mark II is wonderful. You get it in an open gate and what that means is that you're actually recording the whole sensor so instead of recording 16 by 9 which most of its competition actually do it's recording 3 by 2 so it's, you can use the whole sensor while recording video and this is such a wonderful thing especially if you're using this as a social media marketing machine because then you can actually record normally as I'm doing right now and crop afterwards for for those stories 16 by 9 by 16 images that you can use for TikTok, for uh, Instagram stories, for Reels, whatever. So for that, the 6K open gate is a wonderful thing on this camera. So another reason to why I believe this is probably the best camera, at least in the beginning of 2023, is gonna be that burned in LUT. And what that basically means is that you can use your own LUTs that you've made in DaVinci or Photoshop or wherever, if you buy LUTs uh, in different places, you can actually use them now and get those LUTs burned in to your footage. And this is so cool. Now, it's not for everything that you shoot because I still believe that when you shoot vlog, you get such a beautiful dynamic range and you can uh, in post manipulate that footage so you can get the look that you want however for fast turnarounds and if you want you said to send your footage to something like a tablet or a phone this is such a good thing and don't sleep on the ability to do this on photos as well because you can actually uh, put lots on photos and that's such a great thing because if you do have a signature look that you want to have on your Instagram page or anything like that you can actually put that look on your photos and you can export those photos directly to your phone and you don't have to do any post-processing at all. Oh, a few other things that really st make this camera stand out are the the things that Panasonic has in basically all our cameras and it's things like uh, vector scopes for monitoring, uh, waveforms for mo monitoring and these are killer things that Panasonic cameras have had for years but their competition actually lacks. I, so also the, IBIS is probably the best IBIS I've seen on a full frame camera. It's basically on par with Micro Four Thirds cameras. And if you don't know how IBIS works, basically IBIS is easier and easier to get the smaller the sensor is. So if you're shooting some something like this, a camera that has a full frame sensor, it's gonna be a bit harder to get that stabilized. Uh, whereas on a Micro Four Thirds sensor, it's much easier to get that stabilized. That's why you can see on something like an iPhone where stabilization is crazy good, same thing with GoPros and 360 cameras. So with that said, Panasonic S5 Mark II is probably the full frame camera king when it comes to uh, image and body stabilization. Especially when it comes to video, this is crazy. Now I'm using the f1.8 18mm lens and here you have to be a little bit careful because there is a little bit warping in the corners while using uh, really really wide angle lenses. However, from 20mm and up the stabilization will be killer. So if you're gonna vlog a lot with with this camera I would probably go with the 80mm f1.8 or the kit lens that you can get with the S5 Mark II, the 20 to 60, which probably is the best kit lens you can get out there for any system. Now when it comes to the economy of getting this camera, price is of course going to be a big reason to why you get this camera. It comes in at $2000 and at that price there is actually no other camera that can compete. If you're looking at something as the a7 IV, which is $500 more, you're getting a lot of the features similarly in both these cameras but the Panasonic S5 Mark II is coming in at a much better price and if you're also looking at getting something like a kit lens I would say that the kit lens that you could get with the Panasonic S5 Mark II the 20 
to 60 is such a good lens for both beginners but also for people who want to use it in a vlog setup or for YouTube uh, and it's only like two or three hundred dollars more I would say that that combo when it comes to price uh, can't be beaten in 2023 so another reason to why I get the Panasonic S5 Mark II is the vlog that comes out of this camera. The image you're, that you're getting is so beautiful. Now I know that all of the other manufacturers of cameras have their own logarithmic log styles and they work a little bit differently. However, my favorite is going to be the vlog that comes out of this camera. However, I would say that if you're using Final Cut Pro, be careful about using the, the vlog uh, LUT that is in there and make your own because I don't feel that to be as accurate as I would want to be in the reds perhaps. Another reason is going to be the dynamic range. And the dynamic range on this camera is stupid good. Uh, I would actually compare it to the dynamic range on the Sony a7 S3 which is crazy uh, it says that it's supposed to be around 14 stops and I'm not really sure about the metrics you you should probably look at Gerald Undone's videos when it comes to dynamic range because he has a Sila something uh, where he actually measures the, the dynamic range and I actually think that the Panasonic S5 Mark II is very similar to the Sony cameras and the Sony cameras have actually been the leader when it comes to dynamic range and when it comes to this type of camera and I'm really happy to say that the Panasonic S5 Mark II is really close to the Sony's perhaps as good in dynamic range. So another thing that is really important when it comes to shooting video and the editing afterwards is going to be how the files are to work with. And my opinion here is that the Panasonic files that come out from Panasonic cameras are often much easier to work with than for example Sony files. I actually had to buy a whole new computer when I went to the A7S III and even then the, the files were really hard to edit. It was first when I changed computers and bought the, uh, the M1 MacBook Pro with the M1, uh, not Ultra, the Max uh, chip in it that I was really happy with how easy it was to edit the different files coming out from A7, Sony A7S III. However, with Panasonic cameras that hasn't been an issue for years so I was a little bit disappointed when, when I went to Sony that it was much harder for my computer to work with those files with, but with Panasonic cameras it's so much easier and you don't need to have the, the best computer to edit those files. So an, a feature that is such a killer feature to be able to change is to change your shutter speed in very small increments. And this is so important to be able to do because sometimes when you're shooting in places where you get flicker because of different light sources, it's so important to be able to change that uh, shutter speed in very small increments and that you can do on the Panasonic cameras with something called Synchro Scan. So another reason to why I would probably go with the Panasonic S5 and the Lumix series of cameras is going to be a couple of lenses that Panasonic has made which are actually very very nice and these lenses are the f1.8 lineup here you can see I have the uh, 35 millimeter f1.8 here we have the 85 millimeters I'm shooting this on the 18 millimeters and where we also have the 50 millimeters and these lenses are basically made uh, in the same matter th matter that a lot of cinema lenses are made they're made to basically weigh the same and have basically the same size they all have the same filter size and it's really nice because Panasonic has made them color accurate between each other so if you're swapping the 18 millimeter that I'm shooting this on right now to something as the 50 millimeters or the 85 or the 35 they also have with 24 millimeter run uh, you will know that you will get the exact same colors in all these lenses and I would actually say that Panasonic having these lenses is such a killer feature because if you're looking at the other manufacturers their photo lenses can at times be quite different when it comes to how they render color and everything like that however with these lenses they're made to look exactly the same when it comes to color and tone and that is such a killer feature and these lenses aren't too expensive as well so, so audio is also a thing that is very important when you're shooting video 
and the preamps that come in Panasonic cameras have always been quite good however when Panasonic introduced the Panasonic G86 they came with a solution which was great you can actually use their XLR1 adapter with the S5 Mark II as well but the difference here is that you can actually get audio tracks from both the XLR adapter and the 3.5 millimeter jack which actually will give you four tracks and you can individually work th with those four tracks in post so another thing and that's a really important thing especially today uh, a day like today when I've been shooting and I've been out in the rain the whole day is that According to me, and this is actually my opinion, I haven't tried it out, but according to me, Panasonic has the best weather ceiling when it comes to DSLR types or mirrorless types of cameras. And this comes from a couple of observations throughout the years. With the Panasonic GH4 and the GH5, I've been cut out in the rain a couple of times. Uh, two times I was in Costa Rica where I was in the jungle and it started raining and both of my cameras get soaking wet, but they still uh, were doing well afterwards. Now, I've had friends that have had uh, both Canon cameras and Sony cameras getting damaged by rain. However, I've never seen a person with a GH5, GH6, S5, S1, S1H who had had problem with the weather ceiling on their camera. So when it comes to reliability and weather sealing, so my belief is probably the Panasonic is the, the brand that I personally would trust the most in a rainy day outside. I even have a friend of mine, Ted Verum, that is an adventure YouTuber. He dropped his GH5 in the water while canoeing and the camera was still working. However, however, the lens that he was using did get foggy into it, but the camera was working very fine afterwards. So I wouldn't recommend anybody to drop their camera in the water, but if you did do that, I would probably say that the Panasonic cameras are probably the best ones to survive something like that. So another thing that I do love about the Panasonic S5 is how the Panasonic S5 together with the Panasonic G86, how it handles handle the custom mode. And on the knob, you have three custom modes. But however, on the third custom mode, you can additionally have three custom modes. However, if you go into the settings, you can actually have 10 custom modes in that mode. So altogether, you can actually have 12 custom modes. And this is such a killer feature, especially now that you can use your own LUTs. You can have different looks for diff different occasions. You can save them to your own custom modes and you can also name them whatever you want them to, to be called. So the way Panasonic implements the custom modes on the Panasonic S5 Mark II is also a great feature. So another reason to why you should get the Panasonic S5 Mark II is gonna be the kit lens that I actually put on right now. It's the 20 to 60 millimeter lens and it's a 3.5 to 5.6 aperture. And it's not the fastest lens, but I feel that it's probably one of the best kit lenses out there for any system. It's quite cheap. I think you can pay two or three hundred dollars to get this with your camera as a kit. And for content creators, this is actually not a bad lens. Right now I'm shooting at 20 millimeters at 3.5. So if you like to vlog and you like to shoot yourself like this, it's actually a very viable. And I would probably get this kit set up even if I had similar lenses because it's so cheap and you actually get a really nice and lightweight lens for stuff like vlogging like I'm doing right now. And something that Panasonic has done with the 20 to 60 is that that it's very optimized for the IBIS that it has. The IBIS is supposed to be working at the best from millimeters and upwards. And this lens being at 20 millimeters is such a great feature. So you won't probably get as wobbly sides as with the wider lenses. Yeah. So I'm really impressed and happy for Panasonic and what they've done with the S5 Mark II. I truly believe that for the price, this is the best camera you can get in 2023. And I think that it's probably the best camera for content creators uh, that are doing social media with fast turnarounds. I really think this is a great camera. So if you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments and see you soon and bye bye.